Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Outside of the Box. And this is kind of a double episode in a way. Um, I have Robotic Death Company with me, which encompasses both Gigabyte and Cobalt. So we get to talk about two robots today. Um, everybody, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Micah. Bye. Thank you. All right. So, um, this is going to be really interesting. We're going to kind of, um, you know, jump around to some matches from last season um, with both robots so that we can kind of get a, a big picture. They're two, you know, very different robots. Um, I think the one thing that they have in common is they're both extremely destructive. <laughs> um, but, you know, aside from that, you know, the, the actual design, um, you know, is, is very different. So I think that that's that kind of makes it, you know, two unique robots um, that have different strengths and, and weaknesses. So we'll we'll definitely get into all of that. Um, the first episode or the first um, match that I want to talk about, I figured that we would start off with a bang and talk about the Ghost Raptor match um, that involved Cobalt, um, which it, it was one of those that I found interesting because I think Chuck Pitzer knew what he was getting into but at the same time may have looked at that first match against fusion and been like mm, you know maybe it's it's not as crazy as as i think it's going to be um matt uh, was quoted before the match saying that he would stop their weapon with his face um <laughs> and, and he kind of did a little bit more than than stop the the weapon um so Let's just, you know, t talk about that because I thought Ghost Raptor got in a couple of really good shots at the beginning. And at, at one point, Cobalt was stuck on the screws briefly and Chuck could have gone in and maybe did something there, but he didn't. He held back. And I kind of wonder if now he wishes he didn't do that um, because Cobalt got out and Matt kind of scooped him up and just he Ghost Raptored him. <laughs> yeah you know cobalt's built like a brick i mean it really could take hits from the back so I, I we really i don't think it could have it could have damaged cobalt if he did hit him but the funny thing is and matt mentioned this later is like you know i wasn't really stuck in the screws i was going the wrong direction he was actually trying to go forward and then you know and the fork was stopping him from going in any farther because the fork was stuck against the back side of those screws underneath so once he realized that, he just backed off and, you know, the rest is history. I think that fight, we're going to see that hit, that last hit of that fight over and over. I've been seeing it already over and over and over for forever. That's always going to be a highlights reel. And now Ghost Raptor can be used as a verb or adjective anytime a robot <laughs> gets completely dissected. So it's another, another use for ghosted. <laughs> 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 well, actually, it should be more cobalted. Cobalt, <laughs> yeah. I, I know that's that's what I thought was funny. Everybody used that terminology, and I'm like, eh, should it be the other way around? You know, but yeah, yeah um, that was just it was crazy, and uh, no one's going to forget that. I mean, yeah, so we just... lost that fight right before him, right? And yeah. it was that the, the robot designed and built in the UK by Sam and Dave, by Dave Molds and Sam Smith. There was only two weaknesses that we found in that fusion fight. The fusion fight, you know, it's hard to fight because it's a vertical and a horizontal, and they're both big hitters. Uh, fortunately, we thought they wouldn't last the whole fight because that's the way they are, but they did. Uh, so, but um, we the two the two only two things was a tensioner, and the wheel hubs were done in, on the plastic, and it just kind of stripped out the wheels from the pushing. So once we replaced that, we had no problems at all. I mean the uh, and if you look at every fight after that, there was no failures. There was no, um, the only, you, you see that every time Cobalt got a single hit, we win the fight eventually, right? We're losing that fight against um, um, Yeti in the beginning. Yeti got under us, flipped us, you know, but once we get a hit, it's, it's pretty much over. He's tweaked. Same with um, Dave's fight uh, is against uh, the, the flame. Same with everybody. Beat. Uh -huh. same with everyone yeah what was it on gruff with gruff yeah. yeah yeah that fight when he when we hit him and it pierced his tank he, he, you can see the it expanding after that and then, uh, 
so another thing on the um, the Ghost Raptor fight is, you know, Matt's style of driving is different than because he never had a spinner. So he always wanted to get under people and jam them against the wall, right? And now you combine that with this just awesome weapon. And this weapon, when it hits, you he, it has the floor behind it, behind it, and the way, way it's centered, the the center of mass and where that is, it's such that if we can get the robot to the weapon, it's pretty much over. But if you he was able to push him without getting him to the weapon because of how steep that is. And once it hit the wall, then it jammed him right into that weapon and it was, it was over. So it, those combination of him driving like that and having that kind of weapon, you know, to feed it, you know, to feed the robot to was pretty spectacular. Definitely. Um, and so now we'll kind of jump to the, the other side of things and talk about gigabyte. Um, specifically the match versus me which is you know a very interesting robot to have to fight and coming into that with a one-on-one -on -one record you know knowing that it was very important to win that match um it sounded like that their intention was to try and get you into the wall um and and you didn't think that it was a good matchup for him which you know i definitely would agree um, for a while, they did a really good job of keeping keeping Gigabyte in towards the middle, you know, hitting that that middle section, um, and then you just ended up exploding one side of SME. Um, so, kind of talk about how how that went, and you know what your strategy was when you were, you know, trying to find a way to get to those side parts. Yeah, when when we we're going to face him, I actually people had talked about if we faced him and the 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 problem I was thinking could happen is if he could corral us into a corner and stop us from spinning. But in the very beginning of that fight, you see when I'm hitting the middle, he's going back. He's not moving me at all. And it's because of the slant of the slanted wedge, he kind of came up on it. So then the rest of that fight, I'm just trying to hit one of those satellites. You know, <laughs> I'd go toward one and he'd move and I'd be away and I'd go toward the other, he'd move and then go away. And, it, you know, that happened for most of the fight until I finally, well, we actually flipped them over. Right. So, one of the hits flipped the whole robot over. So now his weapons, which were on top, are now on the bottom. It's a whole different thing for him driving. And uh, that's when I really hit him after that point, once he got flipped upside down. And that's funny, as we hit him in the middle, that flipped him. It was just, I, I think those the blade must have caught something to hit it harder than before. It just was kind of bouncing off. But that, that whole flexible wedgy thing that he has across there is pretty tough because it, it is flexible and it gives and it doesn't break so that well, one thing i noticed was that the, the uh the flexibility of that was really a a good strategy because it could slowly bleed down the the spin velocity and it actually took quite a bit of power uh to be able to keep that thing spinning uh when it's just bumping along that uh that long flexible shield that smee has yeah, every time it slows it down a little, which takes more power. And, and you'd have that, to back it up to spin it up again. Well, we now have margin in our spin before the motor was fragile. So we hardened it and it became, it got hot. So a, a tough, lots of hits, those things would burn up. But we, we changed motors to a Lemco and that just doesn't happen. We have way, a lot of margin in our heat. And uh, mm -hmm. that's the thing you'd have to have the last the three minute tough fight. You know, you've got to have margins in all your motors. We put uh, stickers on the motors to tell us the temperature. So if the dry motors get hot, we replace them, you know, because they wear out over time. I'm sorry, yeah. Mike. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, that but was, that was definitely. This is from me. Oh, cool. So that, you can see it in the, if you watch the fight at the end, you'll see a bent shaft of the motor, of the weapon that came out. So you can see the nick right where we hit it and the bend is right at the nick. This is like an inch and three quarters of steel. I don't know what kind of steel, but, and then this is another thing that flew off when we fought him. I'm not even sure what the, maybe that's a, the spin or weapon or something. I, I don't even know, but I got a whole boxes of goodies from robots we fought over the years. I just thought I brought, I only brought two. I, I got these and the tantrum ones though. Something I noticed uh, viewing the Smee fight is that while the flexibility of the wedge gave them a lot of durability, it also 
meant that whenever there was a hit, the flexing would actually cause me to break traction. So he couldn't really box John into the corner. Oh, that's true. That's why he had no pushing power. It, it kind of, because the wedge kind of went under and popped him up. That's how he got flipped. It would have been a different fight if it was a flat shell, like our, the old days, or like some of Shredderator shells. So I think they had a, he would have a much better chance against Shredderator, even if Shredderator didn't break himself early in the fight. <laughs> you know, if it went the whole distance, he'd have a better chance of beating Shredderator. Um, yeah, so... Now we'll go ahead and, and we'll go back to um, one of the, the Cobalt fights because, um, I mean, obviously Cobalt had a lot of impressive fights last year. Um, the, the Gruff fight was no exception. Um, Cobalt managed to get Gruff in the air multiple times and I, I don't think really ever let up. And Gruff is a super durable bot. I mean, very tough to break, um, but kind of that persistence. And then like before you knew it, Gruff was on fire, <laughs> um, which I'm sure, you know, having a, a big flamethrower component, you know, I'm sure that they know there's always the risk of that if something gets hit the wrong way. Um, and, and another thing that I thought was a great uh, quote from Matt after the that match is that he said, now I see what Ray gets out of this, um, talking about Ray Billings. So I, I just thought it was really fun. Um, another really good win for, for Cobalt. Um, you know, kind of tell me what you what you have to, to talk about that one. Now, I have a really good picture if you want me to share my screen. It, it kind of says it all. It's a picture of that fight that one of the professional photographers took. Oh, cool. You yeah, if you're, if you're able to do it. Yeah, I, uh, you got to enable it. It's, it's not enabled. This is the picture I'm thinking of, John? Yeah. <laughs> let me see uh yeah oh, i don't see you in it derek though but i see matt um, and wendy and brent and josh josh <laughs> one of the arena frames is perfectly placed to block me out completely oh all right it went black on my side oh here we go yeah can you see that now yeah so this is after Gruff is in the air. He's up way up here somewhere. <laughs> and so after, you know, after that hit, we're all looking up at it. And then here's Josh in the <laughs> with that goofy look on his face. Oh wow, that is terrific. Where, where are you, Derek? Derek must be behind. I'm on the hammer, so I'm probably behind the the frame piece right to the left of Matt there. Yeah. Yeah. Or over here yeah around there yeah Brent is there yeah all right I, I just thought that would be an interesting yeah that, that's unshare? really cool that's really cool how do we how do I unshare I mean, oh I did it <laughs> oh you did it? okay good thank you thank you I, was I knew that uh sorry go on John go ahead Derek I knew that Cole was destructive, of course, after a Ghost Raptor fight. The level of damage we could do to a durable bot was kind of insane when we spoke to the, the Gruff people after their fight. Because we, we bent their frame an inch and something out of alignment, shredded their bottom plate. We apparently somehow locked up one of their drive gear boxes from hitting under them. Just all sorts of stuff. That is crazy. Um, I mean... For, you know, a lot of builders have told me that, that durability is the name of the game, and it certainly helps, but if you have a robot that is that destructive, you know, at some point that durability may only hold up so much, especially if you just get hit the right way, um, and it, it seemed like that was what happened in that fight. Yeah, it's really, it, in order for a robot like Gigabyte to win, it has to be durable. It, it just has to go the three minutes. And my my whole thing starting back in season four was I just want to go three minutes. I don't care if we want to lose. If we go three minutes, it's a win from us. And so that's that's my, was my whole attitude. And, you know, I built two of them. We were fighting in China and, and BattleBots simultaneously. I was in China, Brent was the captain and, and you know, issues in every single fight that we kept updating and updating and updating and that's what how it got to where it was at season five you know it was just from years of iterating two designs and fighting them over and over and 
So, I mean, even we take a big hit like the Copperhead fight. I mean, that two or three huge hits. It looks like he destroyed our weapon and we flipped over there. But, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to break. We're going to keep doing this. You know, you, you got to do this the whole fight to beat us. And, and he didn't, fortunately. He didn't go the whole fight. <laughs> um, so in a minute, we're going to talk about both of the tantrum fights. But really quick, I don't want to go too in-depth into it. But I, I feel like I want to bring it up just because it was one of what I'd say were considered the controversial matches last year um, was the, the win against Whiplash. Um, I, I know that a lot of that controversy was because the fa- a lot of the fans didn't necessarily see everything and there was just a lot of things that weren't clear at that time. But, you know, the situation there, of course, was that both robots weren't moving. Um, you know, Whiplash was kind of stuck. I think both both were kind of stuck. And um, the, the what was said, you know, on the air was that Cobalt's weapon couldn't power down. And a lot of people were really upset about that because they felt that Whiplash got cheated. But from what I've heard since the fight happened, it didn't seem like that was exactly what the case was. Well, so, yeah, so the, the weapon, we couldn't get power down because when we hit him, you see pieces of metal flying, right? And a little piece fell right into the hole and it got stuck in there. So we couldn't get it off. But once you shut off the power to the drive, it shuts the power off to the controller that spins the weapon. And at that point, you and, and the receiver that commands the spin. So there's so many chains of things shut off. It couldn't go on after that point anyway. But it still scared a, tr- a Trey. Trey doesn't like a, that dangerous of a robot to have power to the motor. To the It's not to the controller, but he doesn't know that. It's not. It's It's actually to the motor. So you know it really couldn't turn on so it's like a double safety thing so um but so the controversy at least for me talking to whiplash was that one of the pieces that we knocked out i mean they they were actually dead that fight i mean you look at those hits they were already crab walking before they got stuck so that fight should have been over matt should have just backed off and let him sit instead we were all yelling for another hit and he backed up he went up yeah we were all yelling to back off (laughs) He went on top of a, a piece that we broke off of Whiplash. And once he got on top of that, our ground clearance is low. And it must have been in the center. And it lifted all the wheels off the ground. We have four wheels. And they were all lifted off the ground. And that's, or maybe it was at the back where it pivoted up like that. But, I mean, we had no damage in that fight at all. That The robot was ready to just fight again. So I don't see how anyone could think we lost that fight. I mean, it's just, I mean, just look at the fight. And we won the decision. And that's, the, the rules are, hey, if they're both dead, let's go to decision and they did no damage and we did and they thought they did because we weren't moving but that's a piece of shrapnel from them our damage to them stopped us and stopped us from turning the on and off switch too yeah that's right really and a, that's, that's, a, whole that's a very good point and again i mean i think that that's why like you know fan perspective versus the way something is shown on tv is it necessarily like you don't get everything from that that you do if you're right there in the arena especially from a builder or driver perspective so um i I wanted to make sure i asked about that because it's i think it's always good to clear the air and get like the full perspective of what actually happened um so yeah so you know that and then uh, getting into the tantrum fight with you know both robots um fought tantrum um which honestly, I think is is a credit to your team that both, um, you know, Tantrum, who was the eventual winner, you know, that that you lost to to that robot. Um, if it was going to have to be to to anybody, um, they were you know pretty different fights though. Um, with Gigabyte, you ended up using you know that special mechanism with the forks on it. Um, and it, it got knocked off pretty quickly. So you weren't even really able to use it for, for very long. Um, and then with the um, Cobalt fight, there was, I, I, I think to Tantrum's credit, um, Dylan did some really good driving and had a lot of patience um, to, to kind of get Cobalt in the position that they wanted and were able to attack the Forks um, and kind of got them into a corner and were able to to punch them out of the arena. So, you know, I just kind of want to see your take on those two fights, you know, the differences between the two and just what you thought of them. 
Yeah, the, um, the, the Dylan is such a driver. And, 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 you know, being a good driver is more than just being able to control your robot. It's having tactics to win. And he has the right tactic with every robot. And it's not the same tactic. And he, they, they must talk about it. They must or have a computer that tells them how to fight every robot because it's his driving is just amazing. I mean, they're a great robot. They have a, everything across the board is really good, but there's nothing in it that's spectacular. They're, you know what I'm saying? They don't have the biggest hit out there. They don't have the fastest robot out there. They don't have the biggest brick, but they have everything is good with a, a fantastic team and a fantastic driver. But yeah, so they, he just outdrove us with Cobalt. And, you know, once we got in that corner and, you know, he was able to get us under us and flip us out, didn't get a single hit. You know, it's one of those things with Tantrum, we probably need more than one hit. It would, it would be the Scorpios fight that may happen in the future <laughs> when a robot can't get knocked out it just got to keep hitting and hitting and hitting it the whole fight so that's you know tantrum is one of those robots plus it tries to avoid getting hit you know and it, it avoids doing anything that could damage it um the gigabyte fight you know we put those forks on there where a wedge couldn't get under us right and what happened is i had this whole system designed and when we pulled that new shell in for this system it was way overweight. The, the piece was an oversized piece and we couldn't put all the blades we needed for that fight. And so the idea was he would get delivered into a weapon up above. And he, he told me that he, it worried him. They didn't come right at us to begin with. If you, and it was made to break off by the way, because if it gets bent or stuck, you're dead. You can't, you can't drive, you can't do anything. So if you watch that, the, the fork sort of worked. There was an issue with him is when he got over, his little wedge went under and stopped us from spinning. That's not what we wanted. We wanted to go up and get hit by a weapon, right? So it doesn't wedge between the two and stop us from spinning. So um, so we got work to do on that. Um, and we have some upgrades, you know, based off this season on Gigabyte. And, you know, those upgrades are, you know, we kind of all designed them and Chewie's going to be making those upgrades in the next few months, hopefully. So yeah, and, but I'm proud that we went the full, the full three minutes. People think if we don't stop spinning, actually Alex of Tantrum told me this. He goes, you know, if you don't stop spinning, you win that fight. Because we did a lot of damage. They, when they went back to their pits, I don't think either wheel was working. You can see at the end, they're, they're about dead, right? They're really having a hard time. And then they gave me this. <laughs> <laughs> so... That our weapon put that hole in there. So we cut that hole into this thing. I got it signed by them guys too. This, this is pretty cool. One of my, this is going to be used at all my events to counterweight my, I got a thing to hold the shells. And if one shell's on it, it's all out of balance. So this, this will balance that out. So I'm thinking I'm going to bring this in the future to every event attached to one of my cards. One of the coolest, uh, they said it's pretty useless to him now. There was another cut like that up on high on the robot. And, you know, when he got us up on the ledge, I said to Mike, spin that sucker up full speed, spin it up. And so I'm waiting, you know, I'm getting up, we're up to full speed. I'm waiting for him to come there because I'm, you know, I, I plan to dive bomb him. And when we did that, he has these ears up above to protect his thing. And we hit one and just sliced the hole just like this. Yeah, he cut and it that, off. And, and, oh, did, yeah, almost we survived. Uh, but he did say they had more damage from that fight than any fight all season. That that wouldn't and, surprise um, me. And, and I mean, I think if if there had been, you know, say another 20 seconds in that match, they could have possibly gotten counted out because they yeah. were not moving well at the end there. Yeah. And then the reason that the weapon stopped is our motor controller came loose and I had always put Gorilla Tape on it. And gorilla Tape... <laughs> stop you know even if it comes loose it doesn't it's really tough stuff but a teammate decided to do it a different way and i didn't you know, nobody told me about it and so what it, the way he did it it came off and it shorted so all those hits were shortened shortened and shortened until a until a battery connector melted loose and so we lost our weapon uh, there was no other damage we just replaced the battery connector put it in everything works so that, you know it's just these little things like that happen we we've, we've actually had the motor controller break loose before and then we added another shock mount there's only four and there's five now the five shock mounts broke in this one so um you know it's just things you learn got to make sure we go back to using gorilla glue i try to tell them a, a gorilla tape don't make any changes unless you talk to me about it you know it's just i've been doing things so long in a certain way that it doesn't fail anymore and 
all these guys want to make changes. Like, oh, let's change this. Why? Did that cost us a fight? Did it fail? We got things that cost us a fight. Why are we talking about things that didn't cost? It makes no sense. <laughs> and it's that attitude, I think, that it had Sam and Dave choose me to take co op because they're like, we see that you just make things better and better over time. And that's what they wanted with Cobalt. They wanted, they wanted us to take their baby, you know, and make it as best as we can, you know, because they couldn't do it. You know, they both are new fathers. So they're like, we're done with COVID and all that. They were just spending their time with their babies instead of on robots. That's, that's the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, kind of stepping off of, of last season, um, I really want to talk about the Son of Waiachi bounty because that whole tournament obviously had implications for the upcoming champions show, um, you know, that's going to be starting here in a couple of weeks, which we're not going to talk about because no one knows anything about that. Um, but I, I want to talk about that Son of Waiachi bounty um, we're not going to talk about the, the Grabot or, or Big Dill fights, really, because the Grabot fight was obviously very fast. You know, there, there wasn't a lot there. Um, and the Big Dill fight, um, they didn't, they, they were, they did pretty good not giving uh, Gigabyte a lot of openings to do anything. But I think that that collective damage of just hitting them and hitting them eventually kind of took its toll. Um, and, and that's what happened with that one. But you, you did talk about the Copperhead fight a little bit earlier, and I definitely want to talk about that one, um, just because you know they they there was a couple of really massive shots in the beginning, and you know like you said they had the advantage at that point in time, but they turned around and put themselves in a really vulnerable position with the robots backside facing you, and you took advantage, and the match completely completely changed from that point. I think actually an earlier hit, one of those big ones where we flew, it, it tweaked him. So he was already starting to crab walk. Uh, and the, the weird thing is if you've seen what the damage was, it's something buried in the robot. There was a sprocket that broke in half. It's like, it didn't get hit. I mean, you can't even get your hand into it. So it's like, how did, how did it break? And their theory was, well, the hit that you hit us from behind was such a big hit. Or maybe other hits. It was a com you know, combination of big hits. It cracked that piece in half. You know, it, it must have been cast metal, but cast metal works fine when it's not getting hit. But it didn't get hit. It just took a shock. Uh, so it's really, I wish, you know, we knew exactly how that happened. But then they didn't really figure out why the other wheel stopped working. Something to do with shock. They said when they took it back and turned it down and came up, it, it worked. At least the one wheel did. But yeah, that fight in the beginning was bad for Gigabyte. That first hit, we flip over, and the next one, we bounce over and wobble. And the very first hit broke the blade off. So now we're spinning with one blade, and it's hanging. Uh, the next hit, it's hanging out. And it's hard to drive because the thing's wobbling. And, uh, and I kept thinking there's something wrong with my when I'm driving. But as soon as I think was, was, was it you, Mike, or Matt, doing the spin at that? Do you remember? I think uh, whoever was, they slowed spin down all of a sudden hey i can drive again what it's like my wheel got fixed <laughs> yeah I, I didn't even know they spun down yeah yeah uh, and that's when, when you get that little snake when it's imbalanced you, you have to cut back on the spin a little bit yeah it's impossible to drive but you know after those big hits i, I was pretty confident that it's going to still going to be a different fight because we're so durable we can we take so much and keep going and going and going and um it, you know, the only way to win that fight wasn't a decision. If they if they're working that whole fight, they win that fight. So you know, you were you speaking know, of Im improving the durability of the bot and being able to tolerate an imbalance like that was one of the things we learned in China. Yeah, we remember, remember we yeah. lost a blade and it vibrated and nothing broke during that fight, but something got damaged and broke loose later on because of that vibration. And that we've goes, learned how to harden it. All right, that goes way back to a tombstone fight. Uh, he hit us and knocked the blade off. It was super megabyte. And it just shook like this. I mean, it was crazy. And that shaking destroyed the receiver inside. And we looked yeah. at that fight. He knocked all the bolts off. You know, he, he skimmed the bolts off and they fell out. And then <laughs> the, the weapon came off. And so we now, all those bolts, we 
we tombstone them in, which means shugu them in. <laughs> because of tombstone, we shugu all those bolts in there. You know, we put so that way if the nuts get knocked off, they stay in place and hold the hold the blade in place. So I mean it's little things like that that we did over the years, you know, to make things not break or be able to survive with the break. Um, and then so following, you know, that fight, you had the the fight against son of Waiachi and one thing that I really wanted to ask is because I know often um, when people are talking about their strategy against anything, oh yeah, see that? <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, um, that is awesome. I'm so happy with this. <laughs> um, but yeah, like any any time that anyone is facing a spinner, they're always like, "Hey, you know, I'm not going to let them spin up." Obviously, you both have you know a, a spinning you know type of mechanism, but it seemed like you were both happy to let each other spin up first before you tried to attempt any contact. Was that intentional? It was, it was. And we talked about it, you know, beforehand. It's like we, we really couldn't stop the other one from spinning up anyway. Right. I mean, while I'm spinning up, it doesn't drive very well. So a lot of times, you know, Michael spin up slow on purpose so that I can drive around because if he spins up fast, the bottom's getting tweaked that whole time and it's hard to drive. Um, and that, you know, that's an issue. If we, if we just throttled it all the way, the bottom would just spin. So we, that's how much power we have and how much weight. So like 50, 50, right. The weapon and the, and it's how much grip you get too. So we changed wheels this year based on, um, experience with cobalt, Dave and Sam, they had using our wheels and then they changed and all of a sudden it fixed a bunch of problems. So we did that and it did make a difference. We have a more grippier, better spin up you know, a grip of your tires. Yeah. But yeah, unless I you, saw, oh, go ahead. Unless you get a slippery floor. We've had that happen. Debris left yeah, from previous fights. Um, now the self rider ended up coming off basically after the first big hit. Were you concerned at all at that point, or did you still feel very confident that you would be able to, you know, at least get to the full three minutes, uh, you know, because Gigabyte's so durable? Yeah, I, I was still confident because his weapon isn't the kind that would flip us over, right? He's spinning the same, you know, way we're spinning, the same dimension, and I got a slant on it. So we're, we got the big advantage on that, uh, even without that. I, you know, we, we actually debated not even putting it on because I knew it'd get knocked off. It's like, when you put it on with a fight like Tombstone, it gets knocked off whether you win the fight or not. And we've seen that in China. I put I put it on there and we fight a Tombstone clone and, you know, we knock him out, but he would knock our mask off, you know. So we just lose a mask and there's nothing to gain from putting it on. But we put it on just in case some weird thing happens early on before it gets hit and we get self right But, you know, that didn't happen. And I, I, I don't think it mattered. Yeah, I mean, we didn't really need it there. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was still, it was a really fun fight. I, I don't just like the, the fact that, you know, Jake was so giddy before the match. I was like, D does he, does he know what's going to happen here? Like, you know, he, he wasn't his usual confident self, I would say. Um, so I, 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 you know, I, I wonder if part of him knew what he was going up against, um, that maybe it well, wasn't he the wanted, best matchup. Yeah, he wanted to end SOW. He did not want to ever bring it back. He even told me that. And then you seen in the fight, he's all he, he said, I wanted to completely destroy it. You know, he, he was trying to like, let's go hit the corner and destroy that whole corner. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, they'll, they'll be really mad, but it'll be cool. I'm like, okay, we're not doing it. And then at the end, he's upside down <laughs> saying, hit me in that corner. And we did. We, we totally messed that corner up. They were not happy. Because, you know, I, me keep hitting him and that blade hitting that corner, they couldn't open it. They had to get a torch and hammers and stuff. It was completely, totally hosed. Yeah. And they that was the last fight of the entire event. On purpose. And they did it on purpose. <laughs> I'm like, I kept saying, we're going to go fight. Yours is the last because the arena is not going to work after your fight. You know, the way I do, okay. So, and we were so exhausted by that time. But the adrenaline goes, you know, you, you get in a fight and the adrenaline goes and you all of a sudden you're up for three minutes. You're, you're woke. Do, do they really tend to get frustrated when the arena gets broken? Yeah. And same thing <laughs> happened in China. You know, they had this really nice practice arena. And I asked them, the guy's name was Karma. 
can, can we hit the wall? I mean, we want to test our robot, hit the wall over and over. Oh yeah, it'll handle it. We totally destroyed that test arena. And afterward he was so mad. He's like, fuck. And then he, <laughs> then he realized I heard him. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. This isn't meant for you. It's me. I should have never let you do that. But you found all the problems in our arena. So they took a whole day off. They fixed that arena. They went to the main big arena and they went the whole way and redid everything based on us messing up their arena. So yeah, we need that kind of practice, but we can't get it. Right? We can't, there's nothing we can hit out in public, like hitting the side of a solid steel arena that's safe, you know, it's enclosed. And we did find some problems with that. Uh, I think uh, the belts we had stuck so much it damaged the motor. So we used, went to different belts for that reason. Th those motors, the, the old E-Techs were kind of fragile compared to what we use now. Well, the big question now is, um, what do you think look like for next season? I mean, pending, I'm sure that there will be a next season. I feel like there's going to be, even though we haven't heard anything yet. Um, but what what is what is that going to look like for Gigabyte and Cobalt? So we have some upgrades to Gigabyte. And we all kind of worked at, at these upgrades. They're all done in SolidWorks. And Chewy is going to be implementing them. So hopefully, whatever problems he finds, we'll be able to deal with. And I'm you know, Matt retired for good. So I'm taking over the helms of Cobalt. And so I made a, a safe weapon. It doesn't have, it's just a round circle so I can drive it while I'm spinning it. And uh, Derek is building a test robot out of an old Gigabyte chassis. So that's working on the Cobalt. Um, Chewy's working on Gigabyte and uh, we lost Brent. He's, he's got cancer. So Brent won't won't be with the team until he recovers from that. So it might take a year because he's got a whole year of chemo and radiation and surgery ahead of him. Um, and he really was our machinist. Well, so now we got Chewy, he's a machinist, but he also did the welding. Chewy's the only one that does welding now on the team because Matt, it was Matt, Brent and Chewy were welders and we lost two of them. So we're down to, and he's not local. So that's, that's tough. He's up in the Bay area. Uh, but we got all the gigabyte chassis to him and all the everything hopefully that he needs. And uh, I'm confident he'll be able to make that. So what the design is, we're going to a better drivetrain on gigabyte. We're going to lose 10 pounds. We're going to have more power, more speed, and give us weight to do other things, like have a better wedge. You know, that that little fork mechanism, there are some issues with it. We got we to gotta do that better. So th that's really what we're talking about for gigabyte is, you know, better drive train and get that wedge going. Every, everything else I think is in pretty good shape. And then Cobalt, we're gonna come up with a new set of forks or, or not forks, little wedgelets. You know, the wedgelets that, so people can't get under us. And then for me to practice driving, that's most of, you know, most of that. And I, you know, I have Derek to help with that. And Mike is working on motor controllers. So the motor controllers that um, we use for Gigabyte are now used in Malice and Mammoth. And uh, Sabretooth is a British robot. They're using it also. Uh, and then eventually we want to get them on sale. Um, but without that, Gigabyte couldn't do what it does. Without that motor controller, Malice said the same thing. They, they went through so many motor controllers with a heavy weapon. I think there's a 60 pounds. Ours is like 120. You, you can't just use any kind of motor controller. It has to be, you know, something kind of tuned for that application. And we took us... How many years now? Five. <laughs> so we started in yeah, 2017. Making, making little improvements every year. Yeah. Well, that's that's very exciting. Um, one other thing that I wanted to ask, I mean, this is just, um, you know, I, I always hope that when we talk about these potential, like, um, matchups that that the BattleBots people will will make this happen. But if you could pick you know, any robot to go up against Gigabyte and to go up against Cobalt next year that you're like, I would love this matchup. What robots would those be? Hmm. Anybody have a favorite robot? Big That's Horizontal fun. would be a fun one for either Gigabyte or Cobalt. Yeah, you know, well. I keep wanting to go back up against Tombstone. Yeah, a Tombstone popped my head for both robots. 
but everybody wants to fight him. Poor Ray, right? Everyone's up. <laughs> he's like the he's like the, the gunslinger, right? Everybody wants to go after Ray. And that's the only reason I didn't say Tombstone, because I think we could beat him with both robots. But he hits so hard, and he's and when he's reliable, he's hitting you like that the whole fight. That's there's no it's the biggest hit in the, the game by far, uh, is Tombstone. So that's but, you know, I want a good fight. I'd rather lose a good fight. I'd like the tantrum fight, for instance, way better than I like the Shredderator fight. Even though we won Shredderator, we lost tantrum. So I think Rotator would be one of those fights. That is such a tough robot. It just keeps going and going and going. It's, re it's ridiculous, that robot. And either one of those robots, Rotator, would be a great fight. And I'm hoping it goes three minutes. You know, it's a three-minute Battle, I like the Valkyrie Rotator fight. That one just took my breath away. That went three minutes of slugfest. You know, it was just an amazing fight. So either of those two robots too, because that's that's what I want. I want to fight a robot that's not, we're not going to wipe him out. He's not going to wipe us out. It's going to be a, a tough fight where we get to fight the whole fight. So that's that's the kind of fights I really enjoy. It's nice to have an easy one early on, but you, you know, you don't get better with an easy fight. You know, it's better to have have these tough fights you learn you, you, it kind of knocks your ego down a little every time you lose but it just gets you to figure out how to win that fight you know we how to change things whether it's driving or something in the robot or whatever and that's what makes the sport fun is we're always trying to get better and they're trying to get better it's an arms race so different than go back 20 years it's a whole different even 10 years it's a different ballgame Right. It, it definitely is. Um, I mean, it's, it's so funny because there's a lot of things that, you know, have changed since, say, the, the Comedy Central days. And there's so many things that are, are still similar from then, you know, different types of robots, obviously, now, um, you know, there's there's a lot more of the, the vertical and horizontal spinners today. And back then, I think it was really a lot more like hammer type of bots and saws and things of that nature. So, I mean, it certainly has evolved over the course of time. Um, what one other like other question though about the, the robots, like because of the fact that you've been doing this for such a long time, are there any of the rookie bots that have come out say over the last year or two that you think are just really strong and are going to be one of those top robots for a long time to come oh my god this was the toughest best rookie year ever by a huge margin you've got so many robots you know you got the what's that big one the beta bar uh riptide riptide you have the one that floats uh it looks like yeah. a starship no and you have blip. blip but the starship one uh oh with the I think we're being a little it, generous it, calling Blip glitch. Are you robot. talking about glitch? Glitch. 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 Riptide. Blip's not a new robot. Well, it's basically tantrum with a flipper. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, but but it has a mechanism in there that nobody's ever done. Oh no, the mechanism is fantastic, but it's not yeah, like it's this is Aaron new. Hill's first rodeo. It, well, you know, Aaron explained it to me. I was blown away. The, the, the way he, the, the way he found out about a mechanism was at a trade show. Somebody used it for something else. He's like, "Well, could that be used for this?" And you know, he went through this whole math and he he did the math and how much power he would get by doing it that way. You know, he's using some kind of spinning mechanism and a an attention. I, to be truthful, I didn't understand everything he said. <laughs> just you know, it's just you know, I just thought it was an amazing robot. That, you know. There had to be another one. There's a, I think there's a fourth one too. Well, right? uppercut was, glitch. uppercut was a. But he's not new. No, he's uppercut's been around in third year now, right? They're like in third year now. Yeah, yeah, yeah uppercut's I guess an that... amazing robot. And Alex graduated with my daughter from MIT. He's the uppercut guy. So yeah, I, I, I like. I didn't like our fight with in that corner, but some big hits in that fight. Yeah, definitely. Um, and one thing that I was going to mention, um, kind of as a, a last thing, it's just because over the course of doing these interviews, and it's just, um, you know, cemented that for me more and more, that one thing that hasn't changed a lot in BattleBots is the, just the community, um, you know, because I've heard that from, from people who have been around a long time, that everybody was really it's super there for each other back then and that's something that still is the case today you know everybody wants everybody else to 
to do well, even though it's a competitive environment and everybody helps each other. And I think that's one of the things that's so fantastic about the, the combat robotics community. I totally yeah. agree. Absolutely. Everybody is just amazing in, in every way. It's, it's one yeah. of the reasons I came back. You know, Matt brought me back into the sport after taking seven or eight years off. And that's why when he retired, I worked on getting him back. And I got him back for a little bit, but I guess he's gone now. But yeah, it's, I missed a lot of the people that I hang out with. You know, Brian Nave, Ray Billings, Matt. You know, we've been through this circuit over the years in, in the Robot Fighting League. I don't know if you remember, you're probably not old enough to remember <laughs> Robot Fighting League. And it, it came about in 2001 when there was no more battle bots. And there was these little events or pseudo medium events happening all over the country when North Carolina, Pittsburgh, Louisiana, the Bay Area was most of them still. Uh, so we went all over the country fighting Megabyte and Rambyte. And at one time I had seven robots with three guys. <laughs> it was, you know, where we'd lose when we lost the fight, it was like, yes, you know, because it was so much work <laughs> to keep them going. And so we finally get down to one or two. It was a, that, that was such a great community. Oh. Everybody got together after the fights, all by the pool, and talked about the fights and danced. Yeah, the, yeah, the Minotaur guys are oh, so. They are such cool dancers. Yeah, really and we fun. invited some fans even to come yeah, party with they us. Got at the, they, they, yeah, their, their honeymoon was was um, in, battle box. in Vegas. They had a battle box yeah. honeymoon in Vegas, and they had tickets to the show. Yeah. And, was, and they were big fans of Gigabyte. So once you know we they kind of contacted me through facebook it was yeah so we gave them all the bling we could and we hung out with them yeah it was, it they're having twins yeah yeah they're about to have this twins. month that is so amazing yeah. yeah and your cousin your your cousin's daughter alighting oh that's not my cousin that's a guy i hung out with from first grade all the way to middle school i found out his daughter works on the battle bots uh, the lighting the lighting she does the lighting way up in the yeah, what's the chances of that yeah she hangs from the rafters <laughs> very cool yeah well that is so great um yeah no i i thank all of you for joining me today um i mean you definitely um set the standard for you know robot building and I think that you, you know, especially from what I've heard from other teams and the help that you've given them, it's really helping the the next generation of builders, um, you know, get to to where they need to be to to you know become tenured in in this board and build great robots. So I just think that's amazing. Well, thanks for having us on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, um, you know, anybody who's watching the show, of course, um, you know like and subscribe the the show on youtube um we're also on podbean so please make sure that you check that out um find us on facebook find us on twitter and um we'll see you next time on outside of the box